Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome back to The Restoration Couple. Today's video is going to be all about painting, finishing and fitting our spindles. We opted for a turned traditional style spindle rather than a square or chamfered, sop chamfered um, spindle. They would have been a lot easier to paint. Uh, but that, that's what we've gone for. And we also bought the pre-primed ones, which we figured would speed up a lot of the time. You'd have to worry about knotting and things like that. However, it's probably taken longer because the primer that comes on them is like a, I don't know if it's oil based or some sort of two part thing, but it comes perfectly shiny yellow and nothing takes to it apart from an oil based paint. We wanted to stick with our water based eggshell which we've used everywhere else. So nothing, you know, just it, you could peel it off days later. So uh, we decided we'd have to sand everything. So meticulously sanded through all 50 or 60 of the spindles and I've actually put a new coat of undercoat on there. And as well as that horrible yellow primer coat, they also came with a really sticky barcode label on every single one which had to be picked off. I spent well over an hour just going through every single spindle doing that. <sighs> it's not all rainbows and butterflies here. There's still some very, very frustrating times. Next thing we had to do is decide how we're gonna paint them. Joe did a couple of tester ones up in the bedroom which we kind of put dust sheets down, got ready, and it was clearly gonna be a real painful job kind of getting in and everywhere and I've painted spindles before in situ and there's just no easy way to do it. Until I suddenly thought, well we've got our cheapy Erlex sprayer out here, maybe we could use that. So all I did is I took some screws and I screwed them up every 100 mil, or I, I screwed them down every 100 mil, then I flipped the board over and that left about 25 mil of screw thread showing. And then of course when you buy spindles, even if you make them, you're going to have the hole from the lathe in one end, which you know is perfectly center, uh, centered. So you just put that on, tighten it down, and they're pretty stable. And I've done that on all of them, and I think it worked quite well. The only problem is, tiny garage, we can't move the whole thing around, so it takes a bit of a team effort to get them out of the garage, out into the lane, turn them around whilst wet, bring them back in, screw them down. It's even harder when it's 11 o'clock at night. So these are the ones I did last night. I had to just bung them out of the way, but they're nice and dry now. Uh, I'm not sure if you can make out, but they're looking pretty smooth. I might give them one tiny run at, rub over before we go on with the top coat. And then these are about half an hour, maybe 20 minutes into drying. You might also notice I've got eight taller 110 spindles there because we're doing a cut string staircase. They go down onto the tread, so they have to be, on every step there's a longer spindle. For some reason, they're about three or four times the price, but they will be just for that one bottom staircase, so the rest of them are all the no normal 900 mil. We're gonna take a gamble. There is no sign of rain today, and it's just an absolute nightmare in here, trying to do all the painting and the sanding and all the different coats. So I've set up outside, and I'm hoping I can spray two consecutive coats of the finish, the eggshell, and be done by the end of the day.
I've now got everything to a point where it's got an undercoat and the first coat of finish. And it's still dry and it's still blue sky. So what I've done is put them all over to this table. This one now can move back onto the other table where I'm spraying and I'll give it a quick rub down before it's a final coat. Hi, welcome back. Bit of an early start today, hence the sleepy eyes. Um, I'm hoping to get at least this first floor landing finished today with the spindles in uh, and also cut them for the first part of the staircase coming up where they're onto the treads and get all that done before I go to work. Because we pre-painted and sprayed all our spindles, I don't want to mark them and having already put one on um, the bed of the saw, I noticed that it, it caused some kind of grey metal marks on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just make a quick little kind of mitre saw bed, I guess, up for it out of some scrap wood and then everything, we can put a stop block on there and run it all off at the same time. Got a bit of old wardrobe here, which is going to be nice, flat and smooth. I'm just going to stick the fence at the back and we'll screw into that. That'll do, and that just means we won't get any tear out on the back of the pieces as well. So if you have a quick look at the spindles before we cut everything, um, our building regulations here in the UK say that uh, a 100 millimeter or four inch sphere or ball can't pass through at any point. Now of course ours are turned and slightly tapered so it's no good just making it a fraction under that at the bottom and top because it would be much wider in the middle. So I need to narrow down our infill strips down to 85 mil which will give us 95 maximum in the middle which is fine. A bit rough and ready but that's fine. We know we've got a definite stop there and cut them all. And then of course we don't have any pencil marks to worry about either. Now this is pretty standard me being fussy, but the infill strips for the handrail should be 8mm. Um, and same for the base rail I think. But if you have a look at it, it's not quite good enough. So when you look up there, especially as you're coming up the stairs like we are now, you can see there's actually a slight difference between the height that sticks down. Probably less than a millimetre, but it's the sort of thing that is going to be uh, playing on my mind forever if I don't do it properly. I'm going to take down on the thickness planer and very carefully take off a very, very small pass so that they'll just sink in a little bit further into that rebate. Now if our handrail is parallel with the pitch of the stairs, 
these should all be cut the same like the first batch uh, but I'm going to test fit a few basically I'm going to dry fit the whole of the lower staircase before we get any further because I just need it in there and I'll just put a screw in to jam them in place for a couple of days so it's safe So about half of the spindles are now in and permanently in uh, and they're finished. Which is good because it was pretty fiddly work. A couple of little bits to mention. These, these ones here are all finished. The glad I did that little bit of uh, fiddling with the hardwood infill strip. It's now nice and smooth underneath. The other thing is where it hits the ceiling or in this case the stringer from above and it tapers down with the handrail, the spindles are obviously shorter and at, at a point they no longer have the square section at the top and that looks a little bit odd and I've seen photographs of staircases where they just kind of um, scribe the infill strip to take the round part of the spindle and if you, of course if you had square spindles all the way up then it would be no problem at all. In this instance where the, we've got turn spindles a chap on Facebook gave me some great advice and he said well just cut the square section so in this case this where the square section turns into a, a little bit of turned detail here cut that off the off cuts and then we'll dowel that to the two or three at the end there which means that where it enters the handrail will always be square which means it's a nice and neat finish but also it kind of just it frames the detail part of the spindle. You don't just end up with a tapered bit going into the handrail. So another little point, 32 mil is the width of our spindles, which is the standard. I was tempted to go for the thicker ones and I don't know why, I just thought maybe they'd be more substantial, but actually our handrail really wouldn't have accepted that. It would have left a far smaller uh, lip here underneath and it just would have looked oversized. These seem to be in kind of the right ratio, the right scale with it, all the rest of the joinery and they're very solid as well and they're, these primed, pre-primed ones were hardwood anyway. So up top where we plane down those strips everything fits really nice and flat. Down here, whereas these infill strips should really be flat to start with, because they were all pre-painted and we'd done that beforehand, the, I, I ended up using a construction adhesive rather than wood glue. Uh, simply because wood glue kind of needs bare wood. So I used the construction adhesive which is really strong but it's quite thick so it made these stand up by about half a mil so you can see a little shadow there. It's just a fiddly little detail but you know in hindsight I would have either used less glue or clamped these down more or planed these to start with. So there we go, all spindles are in. First attempt I think we did alright. Nothing was straightforward about it, uh, you know, in some homes you'd have a newel post either end or top and bottom, everything's parallel, it's a lot easier. But everything's in and it, it's looking good now and it'll look even better when the carpet's in and, uh, and all the sort of trim work's done. Of course you've still got this staircase to do up to the top, that's a little bit more simple so I won't bore you with another video on that. Um, but I think that's it, so one more video in to get all the sanding all the painting and the carpet runner in and then we can call this project done. So thanks for watching, remember if you can, do it yourself and we'll see you next time.